Hello and welcome to another episode of Old World Domestication. In this episode, we'll cover the purported domestication of the rabbit. A traditional archaeological view about rabbits is that rabbits were domesticated around 600 AD by French monks. The earliest known records of rabbits were offered by the Romans who encountered the species in the Iberian Peninsula. One of the philosophers, Varro, wrote in the 1st century BC instructions to his wife to keep rabbits alongside hares in her rabbit and hare pens so that they may be fattened up in hutches for food for food at a later date. The researcher Dr. Natchen argued that since within this hutch-like location active hunting occurred which would prevent tameness from appearing. A more common idea is that rabbits were domesticated around 600 AD by French monks as a result of an edict by Pope Gregory the Great. This decree was given by Pope Gregory that you are allowed to eat rabbits, specifically newborn rabbits, during Lent. This edict was further cited by two researchers, Dr. Natchem and Dr. Zinner. Pliny the Elder mentioned that rabbits were a popular food in the first century AD, but this is not evidence that they're considered not meat. It was also wrongly assumed that they were popular during Lent. This statement also misconstrues two individuals that have similar names, St. Gregory of Tours and Pope Gregory VIII, two individuals that are separate people, although living at the exact same time. Now onto the archaeological record. Based on archaeological evidence, rabbits were extensively hunted during the Epineolithic, as well as the Mesolithic and Early Neolithic, epochs in the Iberian Peninsula and southwest France. Aside from a few isolated cases of rabbits appearing on the Mediterranean islands around 2500 years ago, these species were only transported across Europe during the Middle Ages when they're considered the highest status food. When this happened cannot be known because rabbits are extremely mobile and can be found in random dig sites by sheer chance very easily. By simply moving into the area of such a site, living and dying within that region. Most of the transport rabbits, likewise, are indistinguishable from their wild counterparts. Based on current evidence, the earliest known appearances of domesticated rabbits appeared in the 18th century, almost 2,000 years after the earliest historical account of their use as a meat animal in captivity. These skeletal changes associated with domestication first appeared when rabbits were beginning to be used as pets. Now on to the genetics of rabbits. Utilizing genetic approaches, domestication can be traced back in time to a very close estimate of what it would likely be based on molecular time estimates. Domestication likewise requires a robust mutation rate. The first attempt at understanding rabbit domestication was made using fossil DNA, which was degraded quite a bit due to the early and imprecise calibration techniques used in fossils. This method estimated that the split between domesticated and wild rabbits happened between 12,200 and 17,700 years ago. With further understanding on the mutation rates in rabbits, it was found that Rabbits mutate at a much faster rate than humans do, and that humans as a benchmark for our mutation rate is a poor methodology. This was done by studying the wild populations of rabbit that already exist to this day, where it's found that mutation rates are 45% higher than human beings. Mutation rates also vary quite frequently between species, such as the fact that mice, specifically Domesticated mice mutate three times slower than human beings. After searching through the archaeological record and finding out that the edict is likely a myth, it is unlikely that domestication happened during the 600 AD era. Likewise, archaeological evidence shows no differences between the harvested rabbits and wild rabbits in terms of skeletal structure within the Middle Ages and no physical changes occur until the 1800s when domestication events happened. Also for domestication to happen, it must be over a long period of time. It takes many different generations to generate the traits that make an animal domesticated. 
and it's a long, drawn-out process, and intermediaries are often found within the fossil record. No such evidence has been found within rabbits. All the rabbits that are artificially dispersed showcase no morphological changes between the rabbits found in their natural habitat and the rabbits dispersed, indicating that these were just wild rabbits moved from one location to another. Based on this evidence, the most likely origin of domesticated rabbits would be 17th century animal breeders who wanted to breed new novelty varieties of rabbit for the interests of different collectors. Well, that about covers everything. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this video. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to me on BitChoot for a greater variety of content, four videos a week. And thank you to all my subscribers on both platforms. I appreciate it.